our dish today is makluba this is a dish that was requested by you guys because those of you who have had it know how delicious it is and those of you who haven't had it it is a dinner that's definitely worth the effort that you should try it is a traditional palestinian dish made with seasoned rice chicken and layers of vegetables so let's get started you will need one whole chicken that's cut into four pieces a half a cup of short grain rice a half a cup of basmati rice a fourth cup of vermicelli noodles an eighth teaspoon each of black pepper turmeric cinnamon and allspice you will also need two bay leaves, one cinnamon stick, five whole cardamom pods, five whole peppercorns, and five whole cloves, one onion, one potato peeled, one tomato, one carrot peeled, one eggplant, and two and a half teaspoons of salt. To start, let's clean the chicken. You can clean it in any way that you prefer. This step is optional, but it's easy and quick and a great way to clean your chicken. Place it in a bowl and pour two tablespoons of vinegar, any type of vinegar that you have. Here we're using distilled white vinegar. Mix it around so the vinegar coats the chicken all over and let it sit in a bowl for five minutes, turning it halfway through. Once the five minutes have passed, rinse the chicken with cold water until you get rid of all the vinegar. Now place your clean chicken in a stock pot and add cold water to it. You want to add enough water where it's at least three inches above the level of the chicken. Turn on the heat to medium high and bring the chicken to a boil. Watch your chicken closely here because it will release a lot of impurities that might flow over. So as soon as it starts bubbling and boiling, you're going to lower the heat and using a large spoon, skim off some of the impurities off the top of the chicken stock. Once you get most of it, slice your onion into four pieces. Add that to the chicken, add the bay leaf, cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, and black peppers. Now cover the chicken and allow it to simmer on low heat for a full hour. In the meanwhile, let's get the rice and the vegetables ready. Mix the rice in a bowl, add both the short grain rice and the basmati rice and soak them in hot water. Make sure that you cover the rice completely and set it aside. For the veggies, start by slicing the potato into fourth inch thick slices. Then slice your carrot down the middle and cut it into two inch long pieces. Lastly, for the eggplant, remove the stem and cut it into fourth inch thick pieces as well. Now that all the vegetables are sliced and ready, we are going to heat some oil and fry them. Using a skillet, preheat some frying oil over medium high heat. And once your oil is hot, if you have a thermometer, you can measure it to 350 degrees. Um, if not, then give it at least three minutes or four minutes so it could be heated thoroughly. Slide your carrots and your potatoes into the oil very gently so you don't splash everywhere. And allow them to fry for a few minutes until they develop a beautiful golden brown color. These took about five minutes. Um, you're cooking them essentially halfway through because they will cook again with the chicken and the rice. Remove the potatoes and carrots from the oil and place them on a plate that's lined with paper towels so it can drain some of that oil. Now place your eggplants 
into the same frying pan, make sure that you place your eggplants in one single layer so it needs to be done in multiple batches. Be careful when you are placing the eggplants into the hot oil. Since eggplants have a high water content, they might splash when they're first placed into the oil. The eggplants will take a few minutes to brown on the bottom side, then they will need to be turned over so they can also develop a beautiful brown color on the other side. It's been two minutes since we flipped over the eggplants. Now you can remove them and also place them on a plate that's lined with paper towels so it can absorb and drain some of the oil. Set the vegetables aside and at this point the chicken should be done cooking. Line a baking sheet with foil for easy cleanup. Using tongs, remove the chicken from the broth carefully, it will be hot. Place the chicken on the baking sheet and place it in an oven to broil until it develops a nice brown crust. Broiling it on high, it should take about five to seven minutes to develop a nice brown color. While the chicken is broiling, strain the chicken broth using a strainer and a large mixing bowl. Place the strainer on top of a mixing bowl and pour the chicken broth through it. It will catch everything that was used to cook the chicken and it will all need to be discarded. Set your chicken broth aside. Now pull the chicken out of the oven. It should be done broiling and have a nice brown crust. By the way, this step is completely optional, but it will add a lot of color to your pot when you flip it upside down. The chicken is ready, the broth is ready, the vegetables are ready. Now for the vermicelli, heat a small pan over medium-high heat, add your vermicelli, and toast it until it develops a brown color, golden brown. Stir constantly so it doesn't burn, and this should be done in about three to four minutes. Once it is this color, go ahead and pour it into a large mixing bowl. Do not leave it in the pan because it will continue to toast. To the same bowl, add the drained rice. Drain the rice and rinse it until the water runs clear. Add it to the vermicelli, then add in your seasoning and the salt. I know it looks like it's a lot of salt, but it's not because we didn't salt any of the broth or the chicken or the vegetables. So when it's all mixed together, all the seasoning and the salt will be spread evenly. Mix the rice using a spatula and make sure that you're mixing gently not to break up the rice. Now that everything is ready, let's assemble our dish. Start by slicing the tomato and placing it on the bottom of a stock pot. Slice the tomato into thin slices and make sure that it covers the entire bottom. If you need more tomatoes to cover the bottom, you can use another one. Then add in the chicken, the skin side down. Next, add in the vegetables. It doesn't really matter which order you add the vegetables in. Just make sure you place some of the vegetables around the rim of the pan so that way when you flip it, it looks really nice and pretty. Spread the vegetables evenly all over the sides of the pot and over the chicken. Now add in the rice mixture, just pour it on top and using a spatula spread it across the top evenly. And at this point our dish is ready to cook. Place the pot on a stove top over high heat and add in four and a half cups of chicken stock. You might end up using a little bit less or a little bit more. The goal here is to bring up the chicken stock so it can be level with the rice and the vegetables. So you want it to be just at the top of it and cover it. You can keep your heat on high until the whole pot comes to a boil. Then we will lower the heat and cook it on low for 45 minutes. The whole pot just came to a simmer. Lower the heat, cover the pot, 
and cook it on low until the water is fully absorbed and the rice is cooked. This is what the pot looks like after the 45 minutes have passed. The rice looks like it's so fluffed up and delicious. It's definitely fully cooked. Most the liquid is absorbed. You can check by poking your fork on the side of the pot. It looks like there's actually a little bit of liquid left on the pot, which is fine. So what you can do is you can let it simmer for an extra five minutes uncovered so all the rest of the broth can evaporate. Now that all the water has evaporated, cover the pot and let it rest for 10 minutes before you flip it so it can hold its shape. The pot has been sitting for 10 minutes. Now uncover it and we are going to turn it over using a serving tray. We forgot to mention earlier that it is important to use a pot here that has flat handles. That way it could be flush with the serving tray when you turn it over. Place the serving tray over the pot and if your handles get hot, make sure that you use oven mitts and flip it over tap the bottom of the pot and then allow it to rest for 10 minutes so that way when you remove the pot the dish can hold its shape once the 10 minutes have passed this is the big moment very slowly remove your pot and voila look at this beauty it's ready to serve and this is optional but you can um, top it with some chopped parsley and some toasted almonds and pine nuts. I hope this dish turns out great for you. Please let us know how you like it in the comment section. Like and subscribe.